Hey, this is Tim Pierce. A lot of you guys have been asking me to do a lesson on what I think about when I solo rather than just teaching the solo. So this is a lesson on my thought process as I travel through the chord changes. If you want to check out the seven video series on this, click the link below. There's also access to a jam track and tabs. Let's do it. So first, let's talk about the chords. This is in the key of E major, but it lends itself to lots of playing in E minor. And I'll explain why. Start out with an E major chord here. Leave fret seven, fret nine. Drop it down to the D chord here. The A chord here. And then this is C over D, which could be interpreted a couple of ways. It could be interpreted as a C chord. It could be interpreted as an A minor chord. Kind of a combination of both. And being over D lends it to a modal style of playing. is E natural minor, but we'll get back on that. So for the E chord, I can play an E major. When it drops to D and to A and to C over D, it lends itself to playing an E minor and E minor pentatonic. Now you can also stay in E major all the way to the C over D, and that lends a little different tonality. You can, it, gives a happier kind of thing over the over most of it, and then you can go minor just on the last chord. Or you can go minor the minute it shifts from E to D. And on that subject, you can actually mix major and minor over these chords. And I think I've done all of those three things in the actual solo that was the performance. So I start out, let's see. I do a melody that's very simple in E. And then I immediately drop to a D note just to match the movement of the chord. I didn't have to, but that's one choice. Obviously, if the chord changes, you can just choose the next chord tone. That's what I did right there. So. I'm seeing a D right there. So I'm seeing E for this first melody. Just walking up the scale. Then drop down and I visualize this D chord right here. The octave up from down here. And I immediately foreshadow the A that's about to happen by doing this. So I see the A and I'm switching to an A major scale tonality. Check it out. Now when it sits on the A, I'm kind of free just to kind of play an E minor. And that's what I do. I just walk down there. So I just took a break and I googled the modes and I discovered that the two modes that I'm using are E mixolydian and E aeolian. So E mixolydian is the major tonality and E aeolian is the minor tonality. And it's good to know that and good for me to tell you that. So what it is, this e, e major scale that I'm using is based on the five chord. So it has the flat seven in it. So this is the scale. Really slow. How about slower? Okay, when I switch to minor, it's Aeolian. Let me demonstrate that for you. Went up a little higher. It's basically a G major scale. It's another way to think about it. One more time. And once again, to remind, these scales exist everywhere on the neck. Here's E mixolydian here. Here it is here. Here it is here. 
so on and so forth. So I encourage you to look at the whole neck, top to bottom, and, and discover a scale that you're using and discover it everywhere on every string and in every position. It's a good thing to do. So let's review. First chord is E, second chord is D, third chord is A, fourth chord is C over D, which can function like a C or like an A minor. And I can use E mixolydian major for the first three chords, and then I can switch to E aeolian minor for the last chord, or I can only use E mixolydian on the first E chord, and then I can switch to E aeolian for the second three chords. So you can shift your major tonality early or late. That's all I'm saying. And then the other thing is, you can forget, forget all this just because of, of the way music is and the way this chord changes, and you can just play E minor pentatonic and ignore the whole ball game. However, if you do that, it might get a little old as the tune goes by. You might want to, you know, then it becomes a little samey if you're just playing, you know, minor blues over these chords. But this is truly a case where you can mix major and minor. So let's look again at the way I started this solo. Walk up with a simple melody in E, E major. Intervallically, one, two, three, four, drop back down. The band goes to D, I go to D also, interval one and interval five of D. And then I walk down, I foreshadow the move to A. We haven't, we, the band hasn't gone to A yet, it's still on D, but I'm playing an A major scale prior to that, and it works. Partially because it's starting on a D note and it's dropping down just in an A major scale and landing on an A. Pretty simple. So I'm playing a piece of the E, a piece of the D, and then a piece of the A. And they all share the tonality of E mixolydian major. All these notes are basically me tracing the chords and being aware of the chords, but they're also all in E mixolydian, so it's kind of easy that way. And this descending scale in A, it happens before the downbeat of A, I'll show you. So when it lands on A, I can do something unusual. So, I play an A note under this, this phrase. See how interesting that is? To me it is. Kind of neutral. Almost sounds like A mixolydian. Because I've already telegraphed the A here, I can kind of do something surprising right there. And for me, solos, I try and put surprises in solos. It's a fun thing to do. So that can either be interpreted as A, but it can also be interpreted as me just kind of going to E minor. You hear the tonality? If, you, if, you, if your ear chooses to, to interpret it as A, which it would because the band is playing A, then you look at it that way. But you can also just say, we're in E minor, they share the same notes. So I just discovered that I did state a little bit of an A tonality here, check it out. So this riff has three more notes on it. And that makes it kind of speak to the A chord. The minute I add in this third of the A chord that I'm seeing right here, anchors it as an A tonality. Then I jump, because the band goes to the C over D and I can play this Aeolian minor E thing. And the way I start it is here. Let me just double check this with the, the actual performance. Yeah, 
And that's something that, that uh, is very convenient here because I'm here and I'm kind of looking at this as E minor. And what I do is I go. And that's a really easy hand position shift. The thing I like about that is built into this riff is a tritone. So it's surprising and unusual and interesting. And after playing stuff that is kind of sweet and familiar, I get to be a little bit dissonant. Hear that? And it's very easy on the hand to do this. I'll speak, uh, fret speak, and go 9, 10, 9, 11, 10, 9, 11, 12. From here, it gets a little more easy to conceptualize. So what this is, you know this, 10 to 12 on these two strings, fret speak, and then I slide up to 14 and back down. So fast, a lot of hammering on. Check this out, it's, it's pretty much all hammers. Slide up to the ninth, I like that melodic thing. I always like putting in ninths. And then I hit the E note right before the downbeat. I love to play across the bar. And then the downbeat is right there, listen. Love doing that, the upbeat before the down. So once again, to review, this is a tritone right here. And it's nice to throw in a dissonance because I've been playing so sweetly and so melodically and so, I've been obeying scales and chords so much. It was nice to throw in this tonality right there. So I'm back at E and I go to E mixolydian. And I race ahead a little bit to do an early D tonality and an early A tonality. So the band's on E major. I'm simply walking down. You know, I walked up at the beginning, intervallically, one, two, three, four. Here I'm walking down, four, three, two, one, an octave lower. Pretty simple. And that's in the key of E major. Let's see what happens next. So then, Kind of telegraphing the D before it happens once again. See that? There's the D. Doing the third and the one intervallically of D. This country double stop hammer on. Total D tonality. The band is officially on D at that moment. And I think when I land on the A tonality, you can see the A chord shape right there, the piece of the A. Here's the D. That's the A. Let's see, I think I'm... No, it's right on the downbeat of the A, so I'm not early on the A that time. Right on the downbeat. So let's review. Over the E chord, I'm doing intervallically 4, 3, 2, 1 in E major. Then I speak D right there. See the D chord right there? And I do that. The double stop. And then I land on the A chord by playing the third of A here on the third string. So now the band's on A, and I stick with A major pentatonic. I was here. And I move my hand up, so I'm above this position right here, the standard A position, the index finger here on seven. Let me listen. So, so I hammer on. Do another position shift in the middle of the phrase. 
Mm. Band's on A, I'm on A, and it's A major pentatonic. Simple. And the actual position shift is in the middle of the phrase. Sliding up there from 9 to 11. And then we go to the C over D again, and I do the exact same move I did the previous time, which is this tritone. Exactly the same thing, but then I bail out quicker. So then I go. See that? I bail out. Playing E minor. And then with my index finger on fret 10, I slide down instead of going up. And that's a seesaw, down and up. Now, check out the hand position shifts. Playing over C over D, using E minor, Aeolian, E Aeolian. Hand position comes from here, up one fret. And then I come down one fret. So basically the hand is sitting here, then here, then here. So it's up one fret, hand position is up one fret, and then down two frets. First position, second position, third position. Let's see what happens next. Now, after all that, that, uh, that complexity, a simple E minor pentatonic phrase. And that's something I like to do. When I get crazy, I like to get sane afterwards. So this is very, very simple. Very simple, familiar pentatonic E minor blues riff. We do it real slow. And that last E note, once again, is the tonic of the E that the band just landed on. So, to review. And this is something that's actually, I have to actually, I had to watch the film a couple of times to know where my hands were. And then I actually have to re-listen to this to remember what I did. You, you do something really fast without thinking, and then to think about it and play it slow is even more of a challenge. So, here's the A part. A major, pentatonic major over the A chord. And then C over D, I do the familiar. First part of that tritone walk up. And I drop my hand back down to get a very, very familiar. E blues phrase. And then 